This video covers the standard operating procedure for using the TA Instruments Q100 differential scanning calorimeter. The power to this instrument is always left on. You will need to turn on both tanks of nitrogen at the main valve at the beginning of your work. Press the switch to the manual mode on the front end of the cooling unit. Sample pans for this instrument are kept in small plastic boxes on the bench between the hood and the marker board. Use forceps to remove a single pan and place it on the analytical balance. Press the tear button to set the mass to zero. Remove a small piece of polymer sample and place it on a clean piece of paper. Very carefully cut a piece in two so that the longest dimension is no longer than the bottom of the pan. Hold the polymer chip with the forceps against the bench top so that the pieces do not fly off the bench. Place a fragment into the pan and return it to the balance. Ideally, the sample should weigh between 2 and 5 milligrams. Remove the sample from the balance and place it in the center of the black sample pan holder for the crimping tool. Take a single aluminum lid from the box and place it on top of the sample. Make sure the lid is centered in the pan. Place pan and holder in the crimping tool. Move the lever of the crimping tool from the back all the way forward. Then return the lever to the position in the back. Remove the pan from the holder and carry the pan over to the instrument. Touch the screen on the front of the instrument and choose Control Man. Then press the button mark LID to open the sample chamber. If you get a warning about the temperature on the system, do not open the lid. If the chamber is too cold, moisture from the air will condense on the inside and cause problems. If it is too hot, you may risk burning your fingers. Instead, go to the computer and launch the software with the icon labeled TA Instrument Explorer. Then choose the icon marked Q100. From the control menu, choose Go to Standby Temperature. Once the temperature is between 20 and 40 degrees Celsius, open the lid for the sample chamber. Use forceps to place the sample on the front pedestal of the chamber. An empty sample pan and lid rest on the other pedestal as a reference. On the control menu, touch the icon to close the sample chamber. The computer controlling this instrument is normally left on and open to the desktop. Please do not shut down the computer nor log off. You will not be able to access the internet or your email from here. However, you can save your thermograms by pasting them into a Word file and storing them on a flash drive. If necessary, launch the software with the icon called TA Instrument Explorer. Choose the icon marked Q100 for the DSC. A screen summarizing the most recent procedure will open. On the top right, 
click the icon for the experiment wizard. The wizard will walk you through setting up the instrument for an experiment. In this demonstration, we will use a conventional DSC experiment. We will also use a heat cool heat temperature program. We will actually use the information only from the second heating step. In the next screen, unselect the box that says to use the current starting temperature. For our work today, we will start at minus 50 degrees Celsius and scan at 10 degrees per minute to a final temperature of 250. In all later runs, we'll set the final temperature to 100 degrees, since we'll only be interested in finding the glass temperature, and that appears for this material below 100. You can record information about this particular experiment on the next screen and create a data file and store it in your own folder inside the data folder for CHEM 320. On the next screen, put your name or initials in the operator line and be certain that the aluminum pan type is the one selected. Check to see that the purge gas and cooling unit are on. Begin the experiment by pressing the green triangle in the upper left corner. The heat flow as a function of temperature will begin to plot out on the graph in the lower right. To get a bigger display, go to the View menu at the top of the screen and select Real-Time Plot View. Our procedure calls for a ramp starting from minus 50 degrees Celsius, so the temperature will drop initially to reach the starting value. Eventually, the temperature will ramp in a positive direction. You can check the current temperature and the time remaining for the run in the table on the right. At the end of the run, choose the icon in the upper right of the screen to launch WinUA, which stands for Universal Analyzer. If necessary, use the File menu to open your data file. Use the left mouse button to drag the cursor in a box around the region of interest. Here we are focusing on the glass transition in this run. From the screen showing the enlarged detail, Pull down the Analyze menu and select Glass Transition. Red crosshairs should appear at each end of the curve. Press the right hand mouse button and choose Accept Limits. The computer will automatically mark the center point on the glass transition as well as the onset temperature to the left of the transition. Both of these numbers are commonly used in the literature in order to characterize this type of event for various materials. You can copy and paste this and other graphs into a Microsoft Word document and save them on your flash drive. At the end of your work, shut off the nitrogen tanks, set the cooler back to the event status, and sign the logbook.